This video covers chapter 15, which is all about sampling distributions. So in this chapter, we're going to cover parameters and statistics, statistical estimation and the law of large numbers, sampling distributions, the sampling distribution of x bar, that's our sample mean, the central limit theorem, this is like a key, key theorem, so pay attention, and the sampling distributions and statistical significance. So, as we begin to use sample data to draw conclusions about a wider population, we need to be clear about it, whether a number describes a sample or a population. And I think I have discussed this before, but I'm going to say it again because we tend to mess it up sometimes. Um, a parameter is a number that describes our population. Think parameter population. The P's go together. A statistic is computed from our sample. So we've got a sample statistic, S and S, right? Um, so we use our statistics to often to estimate an unknown parameter. Remember the P and S, right? P parameters from populations and statistics comes from sample. Mean is our mu of our population. Again, this is typically unknown. Sigma is our standard deviation for the population. We write X bar for the mean of our sample and S for the standard deviation of our sample. So that's the difference between parameters and statistics. And we use good statistics to estimate a parameter. Make it all this up on the screen for us. Okay, so the process of statistical inference, this is a big part of statistics, and involves using information from a sample to draw conclusions about the population. Because like we've mentioned before, sometimes it's impossible to survey or speak with or work with an entire population, right? It's messy. That's a lot, depending upon what your population is. So it's better to take a sample. The issue is, though, that different random samples yield different statistics, right? So if I was looking for the average height of college students and I sampled this class, and then I sampled my class from that I had this past spring, and I sample one of my classes this fall, I'm gonna get a different mean height for each of those classes. So we need to be able to describe the sampling distribution of a possible statistic in order to perform statistical inference. So that means I'm gonna be looking at the distribution of the means. And hopefully it fits something normal, but I didn't really draw a normal curve there, right? It will, as long as our n is big. So we can think of our statistic as a random variable because it takes numerical values that describe the outcomes of the random sampling process. Therefore, we can examine its probability distribution using concepts we learned in earlier chapters. And I promise it's going to like fit a normal distribution eventually. So we've got our population. We take a sample. We collect data about that sample as long as the sample's representative, and we use that to make inferences about the population. The law of large numbers is this. So X bar, our sample mean, is rarely, rarely, rarely exactly right. And it varies from sample to sample. Uh, but why is this a reasonable way to estimate our population mean, especially if it keeps changing? Well, one way and reason is if we keep taking larger and larger samples, our statistic is going to be closer and closer to our parameter of uh, our population mean. This is the law of large numbers. So drawing observations at random from any population with a finite mean mu, as the number of observations drawn increases, the mean of our sample tends to get closer and closer to the mean of the population. So if I wanted to know the mean population of college students, first I could survey just this class, right? That'd be pretty close. Then I could survey maybe everyone at SLU. Then I could survey maybe everyone at SLU and Wash U and Fontbonne and Harris Stowe, all the local universities, and that would get me closer and closer to the true population mean.